Hello everyone. In this video, we are going to discuss the solution for punish the students. So let's study the question and then we will uh, try to code. Okay. So in the question, there is a professor who has just conducted a computer science paper for some students. Let's say n students. All right. And he had instructed his students that they should sit in the roll number wise order so that he will be ab easily able to check those paper and he didn't have to sort the paper according to the roll number okay but the students did not follow his order and sit in the random order all right and when he was the when the professor was trying to check the papers now he found out that none of the student listened to his advice or his order as i might add and rather than sitting in the roll number wise order they sat in the random order so the professor get frustrated and became very angry because he has to now sort all the paper in sorted order in the roll number wise order okay so he want he was very angry so he decided that he is going to teach all the students one lesson which was that if you don't listen to his order then he is going to deduct your marks now how he is going to deduct the marks of students he decided to sort all the paper in the bubble sort using bubble sort okay so why bubble sort because he is a computer computer science teacher okay so and how do I know his computer science teacher because he has taken a computer science paper so he wants to the professor has decided to sort all the paper according to roll number by bubble sort and count the number of swap required for each and every student so for example let's say the roll number for roll number three the professor need to okay let me write this roll number somewhere yeah this is my roll number array which is representing the order at which the uh, paper were arranged roll number three's paper come first the roll number two's paper were there then roll number four's paper then roll number one's paper then roll number five's paper okay so this is the kind of order in which the papers are in currently okay so what he need to do is that he needs to calculate how many times one roll number has to, uh, how many times he need to swap according to bubble sort for one student so that he can detect that many marks for one student so let's say for example for roll number three the professor needed to swap a times so that his paper is in the right order for roll number two he need to swap some b times for roll number four he need to swap c times for roll number one he need to swap d times roll number five e times okay so let's say this many times of swapping he needed to arrange all this paper according to the roll number when he is using bubble sort algorithm okay now he has taken in this many swap for each student each roll number uh, this is representing the roll number and this is representing the marks of the students this is the marks for roll number three this is the marks for roll number two this is marks for roll number four this is marks for roll number one this is marks for roll number five so what the professor has decided to punish the student he is going to deduct that many marks how many times the he has to sort the their paper okay so for example roll number three got 50 marks and he needed eight times to swap his paper to put it in the right order so he is going to deduct that many marks for roll number two he got 67 marks so he and the professor needed b times swapping to arrange his paper in the right order 
so it's going to deduct b marks from 57 likewise from roll for roll number 4 he uh, he got 89 marks so he's going to deduct c marks for roll number 3 uh, sorry for roll number 1 he got 71 uh, 79 marks is going to deduct d marks for roll number 5 he is going he get 8, 58 marks but he is going to deduct e marks because he need to swap e times to arrange his paper in the sorted order okay so this is going to give me the new marks of students okay so this many marks the students are going to get now the professor is in some dilemma because he has to maintain some class average okay and because if he don't maintain the class average he may lose his job so if the new average of the new marks is greater than or equal to the minimum average set by the principal or maybe the board he has to maintain at least that many marks so he has to maintain 68 marks average after reducing uh, after reducing marks of every person in this order okay so first we needed to calculate some new marks and then we need to calculate new average so let's try to make an equation and try to calculate the new average 50 minus a plus 67 minus b plus 89 minus c plus 79 minus d plus 58 minus e and divided by the number of students this is going to give me new average all right now this equation is seem uh, is very difficult to read so let's try to make it easy by putting all the numbers at one side and all the alphabet on the other side okay 79 58 okay so here are my numbers and here are my alphabets a plus b plus c plus d plus e okay so this is how it should look and it should be divided by n all right now see carefully did you see something what is what this numbers are representing these numbers are representing nothing but the old marks of the students or rather i should say sum of all marks oh, old marks okay sum of old marks and what this was representing this was representing the number of swapping for uh, required for one student uh, roll number 3's paper should be swapped a times roll number 2's paper should be swapped b times Roll number 4's paper should be swapped C time. Roll number 1's paper should be swapped D times. Roll number 5's paper should be swapped E times. So that many times a paper should be swapped. So isn't this going to give me the total number of swaps? This is nothing but total number of swaps required to sort entire uh, not entire but all the papers all right and n is nothing but the number of student okay so this is how we can calculate our new average hmm. so let's take an example and try to count the number of swaps okay hmm. let's do this copy this and take it down right. 
Hmm. I was assuming that I have to swap A times to put row number three's paper in the right order. B is C, D times swapping, E times swapping, like that. Now let's try to do this A, B, C swapping and count the actual numbers. Okay, so this these are my row numbers. Okay, now we are going to count the number of time we need to swap. Okay, if you remember the bubble sort, what we were, uh, what were we doing in that? We were trying, we were just swapping immediate neighbors and just uh, moving our largest number to the right. Okay, so let's start doing that. Is three greater than two? Yes, we are going to swap here. So two, three, four. One five. Now we are going to check for three and four. No, we can't do that in here. So we move on and try to swap four and one. Now four is greater than one, so we are going to swap. And now we have two, three, one, four, five. Now four and five can be swapped. No, they can't be. So we were swapping and we forgot to count number of swap for each student. Remember I said each student. Okay. So three and two were swapped. Now I was swapping three and two only, but why I have right one in both cases? I said I was swapping three and two and I have written that uh, roll numbers two's paper was swapped one time and uh, no, roll numbers three's paper was swapped one time huh. because simply in the question we have been given that we need to count the number of swap for each and every student for each student which means that even in actuality we are swapping only one times but we need to count the swapping for two and three as well because it wouldn't be fair if I say I have swapped 3 and 2 and I am just swap, uh, writing that only 3's number should be increased and 2's number should not increase but this is not the case here we need to count swapping for 2 and 3 both okay here I was swapping 4 and 1 so one is swapped one time, four is swapped one time. After this, we were trying to swap four and five. Can we swap them? No, we can't. So we move further along and we now start from again. Start again. Okay. And this is my array. Can we swap? No, we can't. Can we swap? Yes, we can. Two, one. Three and four, five. Right. Now, moving on. Can we swap them? No, we can't. Can we swap them? No, we can't. Now, we have two, one, three, four, five. Can we swap them? Yes, we can. And now we have one, two, three, four. Five, but the loop is running so we are going to run our loop till last can you swap no we can't can you swap can, we can't can you swap we can't so if you will count actual number of swapping uh, I have to add I was swapping 3 and 1 here so 3 and 1 was swapped here and 2 and 1 was swapped again plus 1 plus 1 total number of swapping 8 okay if you will count actual number of steps, it will be 1, 2, 3, and 4. Now, the marks deducted will be 8 marks, but actual number of steps is only 4. So, what we can do is, when we are trying to count the number of steps, after we have completed the count of number of steps, we just can multiply this by 2 and we can get total marks deducted 
we can get total mass detected we can actually find the new marks for uh, new sum of marks and after that we can calculate our new average and if that new average that new average is greater than or equal to my average or the minimum average required is actually minimum average uh, minimum average according to the school college whatever okay so if this is greater than or equal to minimum average then the professor is in the safe zone and he can actually punish those students who didn't listen to his words so that's what he is going to do now after the total number swap we are multiplying with two but when we are counting number of swap we can just add two instead of one because in both cases we are doing exactly the same thing we can actually multiply total number of swap while doing bubble sort by two after we have done thing, everything or we can just add two when we are counting the swaps so there is nothing more to that so if we will summarize what we are doing we have some roll number uh, we have been given our array of roll numbers we have been given array of marks according to the roll number and what we need to find is a new average of marks after directing some marks of the students okay so uh, for this what we did was first we tried to calculate our new marks how we were calculating our new marks we were just adding all the marks of the students and then we were subtracting the number of steps because we are ca actually calculating the average not the reduction of marks for each student okay so we did that we were doing first we were calculating some of our old marks and then we were calculating number of steps by doing the bubble sort and then we just divided that by number of total students and we were able to calculate our new average then we were comparing our new average with the minimum average or just average of the uh, of the school that um, minimum average yeah minimum average set by the professor or the school and if new average is greater than or equal to my set average then students can be punished and else if this is not the case if the average new average is less than the minimum average then what we are going to do what we are going to do the professor is going to do okay so the professor can't punish them because if he punishes them he will be punished himself because the principal is going to kick him out of the job and the professor does not want that so he won't punish the students but if average becomes more than or equal to uh, new, our new average becomes more than or equal to the minimum average then he can absolutely punish the students okay so that's all for the approach now let's try to code this is very simple first we are going to write from uh, write the bubble sort and sort the row numbers and we are just we are going to just count our new uh, the number of swap for the bubble sort after that what we are going to do we are calculating the sum of old marks and then we just divide uh, subtract the sum of old marks by total number of swap and then divide by n which is nothing but number of student then we are calculating new average and checking if new average is greater than or equal to average and uh, according to that the professor was punishing students so let's now code this all right then let's code this this is very simple now because we have already defined what we are going to do 
all right so first of all we need the number of sets so how we can find the number of sets simply by doing what just doing the bubble sort so let's the right uh, let's write the code for the bubble sort itr plus one i uh, itr less than n let's create a variable n to denote a number of students n equals total dot length it is presenting the total number of students all right so i less than n and itr plus plus and that's it now our second loop or and i equals to zero i less than n minus i tr because we need to reduce the number of sets okay we don't need to go till the end because we already know one and the last is the itr is already sorted itr element is also already sorted so we don't need to check for that that's why we are doing n minus itr now we need to check if uh, role i is greater than role i plus one if this is true then we need to swap int m equals role i that's it and role i equals role i plus one Uh, R O L L and roll I plus one B plus one equals M. Now we have done the bowl sort, but we needed to count number of swaps here. Now, as discussed earlier, we can just write swap plus equal to two, or we can just count the number of swaps and then multiply it by 2 we are just writing plus 2 here so that by mistake we don't forget to multiply by 2 okay so that's it we have now the number of swaps now we need to calculate the sum of old marks so old mark equal 0 or and i equal to zero i less than n i plus plus and or max plus equals max i okay that's it now we have the old max now we need new max yeah uh and max okay so my new marks will be equal to old marks minus total number of swaps okay if i do this i have new marks now so what i need is my new average so my new average will be equal to n marks divided by number of students which is nothing but n okay so that's it right now we need to return two if my new average is greater than equal to minimum average that we have been given if this is true then i am going to return true if this is false then i am going to return false although this is only sufficient to return true or false I had written ternary operator so that you can clearly see what is going on here. All right, now let's run it. Okay, so it, we have successful submission. Now let's submit code. So it passed all the test cases. 
which means that we have written the code that we have required all right so we have learned about how we can do bubble sort in this question now well don't you see we can write this above here also it won't make any difference yeah even if you write even if you swap the loops this loop come before this loop it won't make any difference right now if you will look carefully we have used bubble sort here so we have taken n square time here we are using a simple loop here so we need to go n times here so if you will talk about complexity for this function time complexity for this function will be we go of n square and that's it and if you talk about the space complexity it will be o of 1 because we haven't used any additional array stack queue etc we haven't used anything like that so we don't need to use that okay so that was all in the question we have been given a story and we need to form solution from that story i think you have understood what the what the story was and how we can reach to its solution so that's all for this video and i have one request for you please don't try to punish your students if you become a professor one day okay so with this is the end of video and i will see you in the next video with a new question and and what nothing just enjoy and keep coding.